Hey guys, Matt from Mr. Matt's Arcade here. Today we're going to do an overview and instruction video for my portable control panel that is running the new Alpha Max 3D Plus game board with over 10,000 games. So the portable control panel is approximately 26 inches wide, uh, 12 inches deep, and about 5 inches high. It's nice and light, so it's easy to bring with you to a friend's house or to store out of the way when you're not using it. Set up for two players with six buttons each. The button layout is A, B, C, top row, D, E, F, bottom row. And then on the front, you have player one start button, exit, coin, player two start button. On the back, you have an on off switch and a volume adjusting knob. And then also a removable HDMI cord and a removable power cord. So when you turn it on, it boots you up to the main selection screen here. And at the very top here, we have several categories. We have 3D, 2D, favorites, recently played, and search. So to go down in one of those, you just press down. And now you can navigate up or down, go game by game, left or right to go page by page. You can also hold it to scroll quicker. When you find a game you want to play, you press the A button. The other ways to find games is if you press the start button, it brings up the search menu over here. If we go left, we go back to these categories I show you, showed you, and you can press down to go into one of those. Or let's get back over to the search. So on the search, breaks it down by category. Versus, shooting, puzzle, action, sport, racing, board player, trackball. And then the next row is your different systems. So we have Dreamcast, N64, MAME, which is one of your arcade sections, PSP, PlayStation 1, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, uh, Sega Mega Drive, or Sega Genesis. Uh, FBA is another arcade section. Then you have PC Engine, and there's also Atari games on here. They just don't have their own separate section. So if you wanted to go into one of those, if you wanted to check out Genesis, you would press the A button, and it brings up this menu over here. Then if we press Start, now we're over here. So these are all Sega Genesis games. Press start to go back over here, and then go to main, which is the arcade, press A, and then press start. Now we're over here in the arcade section. And these games are separated by system, and for the most part, are in alphabetical order. I'll show you one other way to find a game. Press the start button to get over here, and then you can also search by name. It tends to work best if you only type out part of the name, not the entire thing. Then you press start, and now this has every game that has the word Donkey K in it. So let's load up the original Donkey Kong. The A button loads it up. And then since it's an arcade game, you press player one or player two start button. Sometimes you gotta press them twice. A lot of the games use the top row of buttons. Some of the fighting and console systems use all six. Usually it's best just to press each button when you start a game until you figure it out. And then to pause, you press the pause or exit button. It brings up this menu. Um, some games support save state. So we'll do save state and go back in. Oh, and then we died. So if we press the exit button again, go down to load state, it picks up right where we left off. Now, if we want to quit, you go up to quit and hit A. And it kicks us back to the main menu. 
Um, one of the nice things about this game board is it has a very great search function. It has lots of different systems and everything runs really well. Um, what I also like is it has a separate trackball category for trackball games. Um, one of the upgrades you can get for the portable control panel is you can add on a trackball and a spinner. And then another upgrade is on the front here, there's a spot that you can add um, USB ports and get USB controllers. Um, it's only compatible with the manufacturer's controllers, unfortunately, it's not compatible with others. Um, the controllers can be used with the buttons and joysticks for players three and four, or instead of the buttons and joysticks as players one and two. Um, so on the back of the machine, there's a little black button that brings up our settings menu. And I will go over the settings menu with you. So here's the settings menu. So one setting to show you is key settings and key testing. This is your IO test. You can test the buttons and joysticks to make sure that they are all working. In case you thought you had an issue with the button or joystick, you can come in here to confirm. And then you would press start and the A button to go back, which it tells you right here. Um, the other ones to show you is graphic mode. It's either close or open. If you set it to open, it adds a smoothing filter to try to smooth out the games. Some people like the way it looks, some people don't. It's just something that changes the appearance that you can play with. Uh, the other one to show you is game settings, and you can press A to go in it. Over here it gives you instructions on what buttons to use. Um, so you have game difficulty setting. So you can change the difficulty and lives of some of the games. So if you look over here, right now Tekken is set at difficulty 0, lives 5. If we press A, now it's difficulty 1, 2, 3, back to 0. And then if we press B, right now it's set at lives 5. Now it's lives 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, and you could apply these settings to all of the games by pressing the C button. Um, then start goes back. The other one to show you is edit games list. In here you could hide games. So if there was games you didn't want to have shown up in the menu or you wanted to hide from your kids, you can go through and hide them one by one by pressing the A button and it puts a little mark next to it. And then when we go back to the main menu, those games will no longer be visible. Um, the other option is B, which hides all. And then you could go through and just turn on the games you want. And then the C button is show all and turns them all back on. And then start goes back. The other one to show you here is game controller. Right now it's set to console. If we had, if this model had the USB controllers, um, right now they would be set for players three and four. But if we switch that to handle, that would set the USB controllers to players one and two. And then start goes back. And that's all the settings you really need to know about for this model. Uh, the other thing to show you is restore factory settings. If you came in here and you messed up the settings somehow, you could do a restore factory settings to set it back to default. And when you're all done, you press start to go back and it kicks you back to the menu. So if you had made any changes, they would now be visible. When you're all done playing, you would just turn off you would exit back to the game selection screen, and then you would turn off the power switch that's in the back. Here's what the back looks like. You have your power switch over here on the right, your little volume knob on the white box, and the little black settings uh, button right next to it, as well as your HDMI and your power cord. Uh, it shouldn't hurt anything if you pull the power mid-game, but it's safest to back out to the game selection screen first. All right, so we're all done playing, so I'm going to go ahead and kill the power to it. There's the overview and instruction video for my two-player portable control panel. Um, like I said, there are upgrade options available for this. You can add a trackball and a spinner, as well as the USB gamepad upgrade. The other thing I wanted to show you is I just recently designed and built this portable control panel stand, which is perfect if you want to turn your portable control panel 
into a pedestal style cabinet so you have some place to play it so you can stand up and play. Um, otherwise for the portable control panel you have to put it either on your lap, on a counter, or a coffee table, or something like that. Um, but if you wanted to have a nice stand so you could turn it into a pedestal, I designed this stand here. The approximate dimensions are 28 inches wide, 13 inches deep, and 33 inches high, and it's a very nice and sturdy stand. So that is a new product that I'm offering to allow you to turn your portable control panel into a pedestal cabinet. All right, guys, thanks for watching and make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And as always, game on, my friends.